Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Today, I'm in the kitchen. I could go out and start a fire, I guess, but I'm just going to do this in the kitchen. I was just out digging a little trench around my new um, fire pit area, and I ran into a, a couple roots. They're maybe a little beyond punky, almost like sponge. Um, I don't know if this, that's too punky or not, but I thought I'd give it a try and see if I can char it up. I got a, <laughs> there's a ton of it down there if I want more. But uh, we'll give that a try first. I'm using an old cookie tin. That hopefully will work okay. Last time I did it, I had a lot of crease, so it came off of it. But let's give this a try once. I won't make you watch the whole setup here, but see if we get some smoke coming off it. Got my lovely wife next to me, right there. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> what? I'm pretty. Oh, you turn away, sure. I need the comb. Turn right this here. way. We don't care. We're bushcraft people. <laughs> comb here doesn't make any difference. Okay. There you go. We're looking for the smile. All right. So we do have a little smoke coming out already. When that stops smoking, hun, oh. completely stop smoking. Give it about another minute and then turn it off, okay? Oh, okay. Probably take about 15 minutes, I would guess, 10 or 15 minutes. Hard to say. I need to get a little single burner rigged up outside. Actually, I have one in the other kitchen in my, in my new workshop that I haven't started yet. I don't have a tank over there or a regulator. I should probably rig that up so I can just do stuff like this and melt melt wax and melt lead if I need to and stuff like that. We have good ventilation here in the kitchen though. It's open windows and it's open around the top of the, the edge of the roof. Alright, I'll get back in a couple minutes to see what we wind up with. The cat thinks something's cooking up there. Five minutes and still smoking like crazy. Thought maybe after it starts to settle down, I'll give it a shake up, make sure that the top stuff gets as done as the bottom stuff. It's been about 10 minutes, still smoking. Starting to sprinkle here outside. Yeah. Here, just a little bit on the tin roof. It's nice when you hear the tinkle on there, but when it pours, man, is it loud here. I've always had real good with charred punk wood for throwing a spark to it. Even with my uh, flint and steel, it takes a pretty good spark. I usually just keep a small container of it and then just spark into the container and then take a piece out that has a little ember going in it and then uh, close the lid back down and it puts itself out. That's why those Altoid tins are so nice.
been about 15 minutes. Still smoking a little bit. Let me give it one more shake here and see if that'll make any difference. It's, that's ready to eat. <laughs> ready to eat, almost. Want it well done. See, they're way smaller now. I can just tell by the feel of them. That smells good. It does smell good, doesn't it? Mm. It's just like wood. Smells like charcoal. It's like you're grilling fish. Mm. You could cook egg right on top of that if you wanted to. Oh. Hot. Scumble. Whatever you want. I'm Clean as a whistle, huh? <laughs> Don't, Dad, I did not brush my teeth. Oh no. There's a, you just, I see a comment into a video, video about, on bushcraft about, a, you like a knife? <laughs> oh. I said you can, you can have that knife for opening cans up if you want. <laughs> there's a, there's actually a challenge out there from that Filipino guy up in, in the UK. Oh. About opening cans without a can opener. Knife. No, it's, I, I said I, I was, You can I, use the spoon I was, too. I was going to tell him you're an expert with the knife. <laughs> you, you've broken at least nine of my knives so far. I can use the. And she here's a, here's a good one, guys. Had a beautiful had a beautiful hunting knife with about a wasn't a quarter inch spine, but pretty thick spine. As when we first got married, moved over here, and uh, somehow she snapped the blade off an inch away from the handle. And she told my daughter she did it chopping a chicken bone. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, that chicken bone. One of those iron chicken bones, huh? Mm, I go like that. I do it in the wrong way. There's no wrong way, but the, and it, and it just I broke. I don't know why it's... And it just broke right in half. Yeah. Mm, amazing. Maybe there's something goes. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <coughs> smoking just a little bit. <clears throat> I don't know if you can overcook the charred material or not. I heard a guy talking about overcooking his char cloth the other day. I just usually go till they stop smoking then I take them off, leave the lid on for another five minutes for it to cool down, never take the lid off until it's cool because otherwise it'll It'll just start glowing, and, and then, it, then it will burn up. Here's a little tinkling on the roof here. That's, that's pretty good right there, I think. Not bad, anyway. We'll give that a try. If that's not good enough, we'll cook it a little more. Back when it's all cooled down. All right. Let's see what we have here. A little warm. Oh yeah, look at that. Went from a completely full tin to that. And brought a ferro rod out, not in the flint and steel. Makes a spark perfectly. So I think I'll take uh, no more in there at all. I think I'll take this out, put it in something, seal it up, and do another batch after a while. I have about enough for 20 batches if I really want to get it before the it turns completely rotten. All right, well that's all I have for now. Look at that, nice, huh? Please click like and subscribe. You can contact me anytime at blindalloutdoors at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Get outside, have some fun, but make sure you're safe. See you later.